Alan, cosmologists talk about the far future of the universe. Uh, to some of us, the far future is the next election. <laughs> but when physicists and cosmologists talk about the far future, we're not talking about millions or even billions of years. We're talking about really incalculable periods of time and what may happen. From your perspective, particularly in the context of inflation theory, which you created, how do you see the far, far future of the universe? Okay. Um, well, first of all, I'm sure you're aware that this is the kind of question that if you ask five cosmologists, you'll probably get eight answers or something like that. <laughs> I expect at uh, least three from you. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll try. Um, inflation, in its simplest form, produces not just a single universe, but in fact an infinite number of universes. Um, inflation is a twist on the Big Bang Theory in which one proposes that in the early history of our universe, uh, there was a period of exponential expansion uh, that was driven because the universe at that time, we believe, was filled with a peculiar kind of material that literally turns gravity on its head and produces a gravitational repulsion instead of the usual gravitational attraction that we're accustomed to. Uh, this inflation would end uh, because this repulsive gravity material is fundamentally unstable, so it decays like a radioactive substance decays. But it doesn't all end there, uh, because what makes it different from a simple radioactive decay is that while it's decaying, it's also continuing to exponentially expand. So the decay is very much like a radioactive substance. It has a half-life. Uh, so if you wait for one half-life, on average, half of the material would have decayed, would have become normal matter, starting a new normal universe. Uh, but because of the exponential expansion that continues all this time, uh, the half that did not decay would, at the end of this period, uh, have a volume which is, in fact, much larger than everything that you started with. Uh, and this goes on step by step. Uh, so at each stage, even while this repulsive gravity material is decaying, uh, it doesn't disappear, but in fact, the volume of it just keeps getting larger and larger at, in fact, an incredibly rapid rate. And once this process uh, starts, it cannot be stopped? That once this process starts, as far as we can tell, it cannot be stopped. So then maybe the question we have to ask bifurcates into two radically mm. different questions. One is, what is the far future of our piece, which yes. I think you call a pocket universe. It's a very yes. big pocket, but it's a pocket universe. And then what is the far future of all that exists that in that inflation is creating all these different multiple universes. That's right. Is that fair That's to right. do? That's fair to do. That's okay, fair to so, do. so let's... And so far I've been sort of building up to an answer the, to the multiverse question. Okay, so... So maybe we should sort of finish that. And maybe we almost have, but let okay. me just sort of summarize here. Uh, so as far as the multiverse is concerned, as far as everything that exists is concerned, uh, this picture of eternal inflation uh, says that it will go on forever, uh, and forever there will be regions that will be inflating, those regions will decay in places. Uh, each time a decay occurs, it will produce a pocket universe, where, as you mentioned, these pocket universes are huge. Our universe would just be a small speck within one pocket universe. Um, and this will go on literally forever, producing an infinite number of pocket universes. Uh, and so in some ways, that's a rosy picture because it goes on forever, but it doesn't say what happens in our pocket. So now we'll come to that. <laughs> Uh, the story for our pocket is, is much less uh, uh, rosy. Um, our pocket right now uh, is undergoing uh, accelerated expansion, uh, which we learned in the late 1990s is quite a shock, this discovery of what we now call dark energy. Uh, and obviously calling it dark energy suggests that we don't know what it is <laughs> and we don't. Uh, it could just be vacuum energy is the simplest explanation. But even if that's true, we still have no idea why the vacuum has that density of energy. Uh, but our universe right now is accelerating in its expansion. And if that continues, uh, then it will exponentially expand into the infinite future. Uh, as that happens, all of the matter in the universe would dilute uh, due to this enormous expansion. Uh, and it does mean that ultimately life would die out in our, in our pocket universe. Uh, now, we don't know for sure that the stuff that's driving the current expansion is stable. In fact, theory suggests that very likely it's not stable. 
Uh, in the context of string theory, nobody knows how to build a state which causes exponential expansion and is perfectly stable. Mm. Uh, so the suggestion is that it's ultimately unstable and eventually it will decay, uh, and that will release energy and allow the possibility of life and things being created later, uh, but it can't go on forever. Um, it seems that um, ultimately um, life within our part of the universe uh, will cease. Now, is there any possibility, even in principle, for a communication or a travel or anything between our pocket universe in which the likelihood of life being able to exist forever, so to speak, is, is extremely unlikely, if not impossible? Hmm. Is there any possibility for a communication with these other massive numbers, infinite numbers of other pocket universes which are springing up all the time? Or is that just absolutely, in principle, impossible? Okay. The, the answer is that it's not absolutely in principle impossible. Um, uh, as these bubbles, pocket universes form, there is a possibility that they could collide with each other. Uh, and in fact, given the infinity of time, any given pocket universe will ultimately collide with an infinite number of other <laughs> universes. Uh, nonetheless, the collisions are in some real sense very, very rare. Uh, that is, any individual such as ourselves is extremely, extremely unlikely to uh, see uh, any collisions taking place. Well, that's probably good for us here. Yes, I don't know what's, that's right. Uh, that is good. What would happen if there good. was this collision between two of these pocket universes? Okay. That's a hard question to answer because it would depend a lot on the nature of the other pocket universe. Okay. And that, in turn, depends a lot on understanding all the possible states of Because it may or may not have the same number theory. of laws and that that's it, right. it could be close stars and not close stars. It could be all antimatter for all we know. That's right. It could certainly be, well, it could be far different far more different than that. Yeah. But yes, so one possibility would be a universe like ours, but all antimatter. Yeah, that would, would not be, be a possibility. Good. That would certainly not be good. <laughs> but so would most of the other right. possibilities not yeah. be good. You're <laughs> right. right. Uh, what we would see uh, if our universe did collide with another uh, would be an event where we would see nothing until the collision reached us. Uh, and then we would see uh, the effect of the collision sweeping by us uh, probably at a speed very close to the speed of light. Uh, and if that were the case, uh, we would really have no warning because the front would be approaching us at the speed of light. We wouldn't see anything coming from that front until the front itself hit us. Uh, once the front hit us, uh, then presumably we'd be essentially obliterated because we would be living in a region which uh, would have some sort of a combination of the laws of physics uh, that would have held in these two presumably different uh, universes. Okay, so you know you're, you're depressing me pretty good on the side of our pocket <laughs> universe. So let, let, let me just go back to all the other universes, That's which right. has That's a the encouraging, part, of the story. encouraging part and gives me a little bit of uh, of hope. Uh, all those different pocket universes are being created at at an increasing rate because if if the whole concept of inflation has to do with exponential. Uh, uh, increases and doubling every within the same periods of time. The doubling keeps doubling, and you have more to double with it. And so th this keeps in increasing at huge numbers. Is, is that? That is correct. Really? That is correct. Not only does this go on forever, but the rate at which new universes is, is created is increasing exponentially as this process goes on. Uh, so the number of universes created is simply infinite. Um, and uh, if you think of the number up to a certain time, time is not really that well defined in this situation, but if you try to define it, you, could, you have a picture where the number, the rate at which they're being produced is itself increasing exponentially. So in essence, the plentitude of all reality is astonishingly large, getting infinitely larger at an increasing uh, rate per unit time, if that makes any sense. So even if our little pocket disappears, that the, the plenitude of all reality is, 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 is literally infinite. What, what can we say? That's right. That's right. You, uh, <sighs> there will be things going on in our universe, or at least our multiverse, uh, literally forever uh, and in a volume which is essentially infinite. <laughs>